These are the Bio-Rock Coral Reef Restoration Projects at Gili Chowang in Lombok, Indonesia. The structure you see here was designed by the late Wolf Hilberts about 10 years ago, but it hasn't been maintained under power. These photographs, all the video you're going to see here, was taken in October 2016 in Indonesia at the site of projects that are some of our early coral reef restoration projects as well as some of our latest ones. The ones you see here, unfortunately, have lost almost all their corals due to heat stroke. It was very hot in Indonesia early this year, and corals that weren't protected using BioRock technology uh, almost all died. These corals were alive a year, less than a year ago and they were beautiful, but they died from high temperatures. These are old projects that we had. They were doing magnificently for a long time, but unfortunately they weren't maintained and as a result almost all the corals died on them. And some of the recent Indonesia that I dived on this year, 95 to 99 percent of all the corals died. The survival was anywhere from 1 to 5 percent, and vast areas of reef that had been in absolutely perfect condition last year were graveyards this year just because of the high temperature that occurred for a few months early this year. And so here, in this case, these projects uh, weren't maintained. They were getting a small trickle of power from the shore. The cable was broken and wasn't repaired at some point in the past. And as a result, the corals, when the temperatures got hot, simply couldn't take it. And like the surrounding reef and the dead reefs all around it, they died. In this area in Gili Chowangan in 1998, it was the last time there was severe bleaching. That's near 18 years ago. At that point, it was extremely high water in Bali and Lombok and large parts of central Indonesia, and what happened then was what happened this year. Record high temperatures, and almost all the corals simply turned pale and died in the space of a couple weeks. They bleached and died, and they simply couldn't take it. But when I first started diving in Indonesia around that period of time, the reefs that I looked at had everything dying or recently dead. And when we began restoring reefs in Indonesia nearly 20 years ago, this is what the reefs looked like. Dead corals with a few desperate fish hanging around, but very little alive. A graveyard of dead coral fragments all over the bottom. And 1% live coral cover in the background of hard corals. It's the hard corals are the things that build the reef. As you see here in these projects that didn't get power, there's not much action here. Now we're beginning to see some that were getting some power. These, these structures here, unlike the ones we saw before, have been getting a little power. They, they were getting power until June, and then the cable that was powering them got broken in a heavy storm. So they had some mortality, but, but they were, had electricity that protected them for quite a while. As you'll see, there's going to be a big difference between those corals that were got partial power like this versus those that had none at all. You'll see here a lot more living coral and a lot more fish. <coughs> These, so um, as you see all around, there's essentially no living coral on the reef. Everything died in 1998, not only from bleaching and high temperature, but also from bombing. The fishermen actually bombed the reefs to pieces with dynamite. It was the height of the 1998 economic crisis, and so the corals were hit from two angles bad fishing practices and high temperatures simultaneously. And when we began, it was like the areas in between these structures completely barren. Now we're getting to some bio-rock structures that have been under power all through the severe high temperatures that affect in central Indonesia this year. And as you can see here now, these are covered with living corals and swarming with fish. They were exposed to the same conditions as other reefs you saw before that had very little on them. These ones here, we're getting a very small trickle of direct current from a charger on the shore, the growing limestone rock, and as a result of that conditions that were set up here, that trickle charge of electricity has given the corals the strength to resist high temperatures, to resist bleaching, even though these are in very shallow water where it got very hot and they're exposed to very intense sunlight. These corals survived the bleaching. It's almost complete survival on the reefs getting electrical charges in, in Indonesia this year, and almost complete mortality of the same kinds of corals on the control structures and on the surrounding reefs. The fish aren't fooled by dead coral. They, they swarm to where the live coral is. In this case, you see the corals branching like mad, proliferating like mad, 
And they don't look as though they were just severely bleached under severe high temperature shock only a couple months ago. But in fact, they withstood four to six months of severe high temperatures that killed most of the reefs and the surrounding natural reefs around them. So this is now an oasis of life, and as a result, the fish have congregated on the surviving coral. They're, they're not fooled by dead coral. They want to be where the coral is alive. So they just crowd right into these areas and uh, build up very large populations. Quite apart from that, the fish are attracted by the electrical field itself. We build up fish populations systematically wherever they're bio rock projects. The juvenile fish are attracted to the, the uh, bio rock structures. But what you also see is these huge schools of fish surrounding living coral, and these are constantly growing populations. They dash back into the coral for shelter. They don't do it if the coral's dead. You only see them around living coral. So here, in our particular bio rock reefs, we've kept all the corals alive. And as a result, the fish just simply crowd around them. <clears throat> These projects here are especially interesting because there's a whole bunch of bio rock structures in this area here that you can't even see. The coral growth in four years has been so prolific you can't see the underlying structure. And they've, they've actually grown completely down and covered the ground the areas between them don't have any hard coral at all. We transplanted them from structures like this that you see here, put very small fragments onto them, and in the space of a few years, they just exploded with growth, fused together, and made huge mats of corals that were covering the entire sea floor in between. Now, what's interesting is that this particular reef that you see, see us diving over here is one getting a very small trickle of power, but the other ones you saw, that were down on, on the bottom below that, completely covered with corals, weren't getting any power at all. They were simply sitting in the electrical field of structures like this one that we've been powering with a very small trickle. And we were able to grow kilometers of reef using about as much electricity as a single air conditioner. So it's very little. So we're able to keep reefs alive when they would die from severe high bleaching like this. Full of corals, full of fish, and perfectly healthy and happy while the surrounding areas have almost complete mortality. Again, these are reefs that we're growing here without even charging them directly. They're just simply sitting in the electrical field and they're, they're completely covered the tables, the steel tables that we uh, transplanted them onto four years before. So we're able to greatly expand the reef under conditions where it would die. And because we can grow back whole reefs like this in the space of a couple years in places where there's no natural recovery, we can also grow back damaged reefs, protect shorelines. In doing so in Indonesia, doing work just like this, we've grown back severely eroded beaches in just a few months by simply creating massive reef frameworks like this where none were sitting before. You slow the waves down and the beach simply grows right back within a few months. So we've had one beach that we grew back about one and a half meters deep of sand and made it 10 meters wider. Literally, most of that happened in the space January to April of this year. So <clears throat> I'd say this, these, the footage you see here was taken in October 2016 in Indonesia in an area that has just been coming out of a severe catastrophic high temperature bleaching mortality of coral reefs due to global warming. And on our reefs here that are getting power, almost all our corals are alive. You look at the areas down below them and you see only dead coral rubble from the past. Um, these are corals that weren't protected by our method, and they all died before, but the ones we're growing are perfectly happy. Now, the importance of this is that this is a short-term method by which we can keep corals and reefs alive despite global warming. We have limits, too, to how, how long we can keep them alive, but in this case, as you see, in the world's largest and richest coral reefs, we've kept whole reefs alive and whole fish populations where they've disappeared around them. And we're able to do so pretty much anywhere. Here you see more reefs have grown here. Um, you don't even see the reef underneath them. There. So we're growing from small fragments just a few years before. Now, in doing so, we grow back beaches. We grow back whole fisheries. This technology also can be used to, to produce habitat for any number of fish or lobsters or giant clams. Um, we can design them in site-specific ways to meet particular needs. We're often asked whether our bio rock reefs affect turtles and wildlife. Well, the fact is that all forms of life are attracted to our reefs. 
You can see the fish come in huge numbers. They swarm right around them. The electrical field somehow attracts them. We don't even know how, but if the power's off for long periods of time, we get less fish. We turn the power back on. Clouds of fish come back. These ones here are permanently breeding populations of fish here. They range from adult all the way to small. We get huge fish populations. Everything from groupers and, and so forth live inside our structures. Some of them hide in the daytime and come out to feed at night. And others do the opposite. <clears throat> so we create, you know, uh, an oasis of life in short order. And that oasis also functions like a real coral reef does. It generates sand and protects the sand on the beaches from washing away. And so the result is we naturally are able to grow back beaches that have completely vanished, literally within months, by growing coral reefs like this right in front of them. And we can, in cold waters, we do the same, although we don't grow coral reefs. We grow oyster reefs or seagrass or salt marsh. The biorock technology actually, as you see here, is stimulating all forms of marine life. All forms, because what we're doing is we're stimulating the fundamental biochemical mechanism by which all forms of life make their energy. They do that through the biophysics of a small electrical current that flows from the outside to the inside of their cell, and that's how they make all their energy. And our reefs here are oases of positive charge and positive energy that are making everything attracted, they come here faster, they grow faster, they live longer, they survive environmental stresses that would kill them. As a result, we're able to restore whole ecosystems very quickly and maintain them alive, despite the challenges of global warming. We're losing almost all the coral reefs in the world right now due to high temperatures. And uh, these reefs here that we've kept alive in Indonesia just by using a trickle of electrical charge that can be provided from land, from solar panels, from windmills, from tidal energy generators, and from wave energy generators, we can restore whole reefs around whole islands and grow back beaches and save islands from disappearing due to global sea level rise. That's our goal, is to work with communities to apply this, this technology in order to grow back their coral reefs and grow back their fisheries and grow back their islands. Now, as you'll see here, all forms of life love these reefs, and uh, including turtles. People often ask if we frighten turtles away. Well, the answer is, as you'll see here very clearly, they're attracted to our structures. So, please help us restore coral reefs all over the world. They have a technology now that can do it until global warming is controlled by reducing CO2 to safe levels, but until then, Firewalk technology is the only technology we know of that keeps corals alive under severe high temperature conditions where they would otherwise die. And by doing so, by maintaining corals reefs alive, we're going to maintain the fisheries and their ecological services and the biodiversity of turtles just like this. Thank you for your help. This has been a film of the Global Coral Reef Alliance. <clears throat> this footage was taken by Komang Astika from Bali, Indonesia, from the Yayasan Karang Lestari. These projects were maintained by Delphine Rabe of the Gili Eco Trust. I am Tom Garong.